The Woman King tells the story of the Agoji, but in real life, the fierce women warriors played a controversial role in the transatlantic slave trade. Since its release, some fans have criticized the movie for minimizing the kingdom's role in the transatlantic slave trade, calling for a boycott over what they allege are historical inaccuracies. The Agoji, or the Dahomey Amazons, were fierce female warriors that fought for the Dahomey kingdom. The Agoji were fierce women warriors in the ancient kingdom of Dahomey in West Africa. They were national heroes and symbols of female power, but also helped the rise of the 18th century slave trade. Their complicated legacy has been the subject of debate around the film The Woman King. The true history of the Agoji's role in Dahomey's involvement in slave trade is complex. While the Dahomey Amazons were symbols of strength and power, Inspiring other films like Black Panther, they were also complicit in the capture, creation, and sale of other African people. On the one hand, these women were some of the strongest warriors best able to defend African society and are seen as national heroes. Yet depending on where you are in society, you may have a different take on the role they played in history. Dahomey first rose to power as a centralized and militarized kingdom in West Africa in the 17th century. It wasn't until the 18th century, during the peak of the Atlantic slave trade, that the kingdom expanded its might. In 1727, Dahomey conquered the coastal kingdom of Hueda, taking control of the port city Hueda. This would become its main base for trade with European powers and marked the start of its active participation in slave trade. Dahomey soon became a key player in the trafficking of Africans, which proved to be one of the most profitable exports at the time, according to many. Armed with muskets they obtained from foreign nations through the export of slaves and other goods, Dahomey's armies captured people from nearby kingdoms and villages to fuel their supply of slaves, Dahomey's involvement in the slave trade was fueled by European demand for cheap labor. Africans were left with scant choices. Would they benefit from this opportunity to steal people and sell them, run away, or fight back against foreign powers? Dahomey's involvement in the slave trade was fueled by European demand for cheap labor. Africans were left with scant choices. Would they benefit from this opportunity to steal people and sell them, run away, or fight back against foreign powers? It certainly wasn't Africa that came up with the idea of the slave trade, but their involvement was a response to an existing, increasing demand. Historians estimate that nearly one million enslaved Africans were put on ships to the Americas in Ouida between 1659 and 1863, making the port city the second largest supplier of African captives to the trade. The Agoji aided Dahomey's military. Dahomey was ruled by King Gezo, who came to power in 1818 after he staged a coup d'etat against his half-brother. Gezo, who spied an opportunity to boost Dahomey's military and monetary power, forged a partnership with Francisco Aflix de Souza, a Brazilian merchant and slave trader who set up post in the port city of Ouida. The Agoji warriors played a significant role in Gezo's campaign for expansion through the export of Africans. The All Women Battalion was established earlier in the 17th century under King Hagbadia, the third king of Dahomey. Some accounts attribute the founding of the Agoji to Haobadia's daughter, Queen Hang, who is said to have enlisted female bodyguards to protect her. The warriors were barred from having children or marital relationships and subjected to intense, demanding training. They raided villages under the cover of darkness and swiftly executed prisoners. The Agoji reached its peak and became increasingly militaristic in the 19th century under Gezo, who formally incorporated them into Dahomey's army. The kingdom was embroiled in ongoing wars, which led to a decline in the population of men and an opportunity for women to fill in those gaps on the battlefield. The Agoji were sent out on annual campaigns to conquer nearby kingdoms and capture slaves for trade. They also helped to swiftly suppress conspiracies or rebellions among slaves before they could escalate into violent uprisings. The African kingdoms had rules against enslaving people within their own domain but went to war every year to enslave others. They didn't speak the same language and lived far from each other. They were seen as different as enemies. Two major changes occurred in the 1840s and 1850s which significantly altered politics in Dahomey. 
First, the British, who had been a major purchaser of slaves, began taking an active stance in abolishing the slave trade in the 1830s. They sent multiple diplomatic parties to Gezo to try and convince him to end. To Hami's participation in the trade, all of these were rebuffed with Gezo worried of the political consequences of ending such trade. Second, the city of Abiyakuda was founded in 1825 and rose to prominence as a safe haven for people to be safe from the slave raids by Dahami. In 1844, Dahami and Abiyakuda went to war and Abiyakuda was victorious. Other violence in the early 1850s further cemented Abiyakuda's challenge to Dahami's economic control in the region. Internally, the pressure resulted in a number of changes. Gezo rejected British requests for ending the slave trade, but at the same time began expanded significantly the palm oil trade as an economic alternative. Politically, the debate became centered around to political factions, the elephant and the fly. The elephant connected with Gezo, high-profile political leaders, and the Creole slave traders like the family of de Souza pushed for continued activity in the slave trade and resistance to British pressure. The Fly Faction, in contrast, was a loose collection of palm oil producers and sun chieftains which supported accommodation with Abiyakuda and the British in order to expand palm oil trade. At the policy and war debates held at the annual customs, these two factions held a number of tense discussions about the future of the Kingdom of Dahami. In 1851-1852, the British imposed a naval blockade on the ports of Dahami in order to force them to end a slave trade. In January 1852, Gezo accepted a treaty with the British ending the export of slaves from Dahami. In the same year and the following one, Gezo suspended large-scale military campaigns and human sacrifice in the kingdom. However, political pressure contributed to the resumption of slave trading and large-scale military action in 1857 and 1858. Gezo was assassinated by a sniper associated with Abiyakuda and large-scale warfare between the two states resumed in 1864. This one ended again in the favor of Abiyakuda and the result was that the slave trade could not be significantly re-established to its 1850 level. The power of slave traders in the empire decreased and the palm oil trade became a more significant part of the economy. Dahami's control of key coastal cities continued and made the area a crucial location in the European scramble for Africa. In 1878, the Kingdom of Dahami agreed to the French making the city of Cotonou into a protectorate, although taxation of the King of Dahami was to remain in effect. In 1883, the French received similar concessions over Porto, Novo, a traditional rival of Dahami along the coast, in 1889, King Gliel died and his son Bonzin came to power and immediately became quite hostile to the French in negotiations. Behansen renounced the treaty with France providing them with the city of Cotonou and began raiding the possessions. The hostility hit a high point when Bonzin began conducting slave raids and French protectorates along the coast, namely Grand Popo, in 1891. That year, the French military decided that a military takeover was the only solution and placed General Alfred M. D. Dodds in charge of the operation to commence in 1892. The franco dahamian War lasted from 1892 until January 1894 when Dodds captured the city of Abami January 15th and King Bonzin January 25th. Notable during the war was the defeat of the Dahami Amazons in November 1892. Dodds named Agoli Agbo the new king of Dahami largely because he was seen as the most malleable of the alternatives and exiled Bonzin to French possessions in the Caribbean. The French began changing key aspects of administration and politics in the Kingdom of Dahami. In 1899, the French instituted a new poll tax which was highly unpopular and Agoli Egbo opposed the tax causing serious political problems in the protectorate. As a result, on February 17, 1900, the French deposed Agoli, Egbo and ended the Kingdom of Dahomey. The French though brought together many key members of the kingdom as the chiefs of Candons. French Dahomey included the Kingdom of Dahomey with Porto Novo and an area to the north of Loose Tribal control. Agoli, 
Egbo remained exiled from 1900 until 1910 when the French administration decided to allow him to return to the area because of his key role in Fon ancestor worship and ceremonies. He was not allowed to reside in Abami or travel freely, but was allowed to visit Abami to perform ceremonial functions during the annual customs by the French administration. 